Um, it's all focused on this winger area, right? Correct, correct. And here's the thingy. So the thingy is the uh, the magical part of uh, this whole test flight. So I think I'm able to see it. Sorry, do that again. Yeah. So when when it starts separating, right? When it starts working, it's going to go up here, I think. So, so it's going to hit all these tufts. Okay. So we don't need more tufts. No, I don't think so. I think it's going to be good. Do you have a name for that? Call it the vein. When he's motioning with his hand, that's the, where the vortex would lay, right in the wing body fillet. We're taking high energy air and mixing it with the energy that's stalling out or losing energy right at the surface and trying to keep that uh, boundary layer attached. I couldn't find anything that said what Sears no, called it. I saw a few articles and I don't know. There was a lot of like great press around it, you know, yeah. uh, them being excited. <laughs> Cirrus calls it a uh, fuselage vortex generator. Yeah, I don't know. I would call it a stall vein. So how did you set the incidence on it? Obviously that's critical. <clears throat> right, so uh, I did the CFD, cruise conditions. Uh, so I got all the streamlines, the oil flow, figured out where that was, measured it, uh, and uh, designed it and put it in there. Ran it in the CFD, and it lined up with the streamlines within 0.2 of degree, something like that for cruise. Cruise, I used zero degree. AOA. So, so the question he was answering there was how he picked the incidence of the part in CFD. You can see him talking about uh, how he located it in CFD and then he's checking uh, with the aircraft at a given AOA what the local flow is doing uh, you know, because it has to go around the wing, etc. My question was about uh, once he had the answer where he wanted it to be, how did he install it on the airplane? Uh, okay, so CFD told you what angle to put it at. Yes. How did you know what, how to put it at that angle on the airplane? So that moment was interesting for two reasons. The first is that being an engineer, uh, my question, which was a, a practical application question of how did you install it? He's an engineer used to talking about analysis. So he answered the question talking about how he did the analysis. The second reason is interesting. I think CFD has a lot of voodoo around it. People assume that if you, know, if you have a good CFD model, you've got everything. And what we just pointed out was that uh, assuming his model is correct, uh, there's still the question mark of what is the AOA uh, for a given condition, right? So if you um, think your AOA is six and it turns out to be five and a half, in the case of the stall vein, it doesn't matter. But in the case of some other stuff, it may matter. And so uh, uh, there's the, the joke with the, any um, computer-based analytical tool is that uh, it will always give you a pretty picture. CFD is no different. It'll always give you a pretty picture. But whether or not you can believe it is a separate thing. And I think that that's some of the most interesting work in flight tests and why this project gets me so excited is because we have the, the, both the practical side where we're making stuff and sticking it to airplanes. But on the other side, we have, we have to go back to actual analytical tools and you know, figure out what, what we wanted to happen. From the leading edge, where is that point, for instance? Right? Okay, as far as forward yeah. of the leading edge. And also, found this point here where the, uh, the fillet starts, for instance. Okay. And I measured it vertically to come up with whatever the vertical point is here. Yeah. And then I did the same thing. Coming uh, and then I measured the angle here, which is always zero. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. So that's and a then, good reference. And then I put my my leveler on this one, rotated that one to the same degree, and then made uh, pilot holes, clicked it in place, and then uh, you know drilled it and so forth. Did the same thing on the other side. And it's installed right now with Pop Popovitz. No, no. It, oh, wow, it's cool, cool. Right. And then. Um, Yes, and then I did the, uh, the CFD with, uh, I think it was 13 and 14 degrees AOA to see where it ended up. You know, nice vortex lined up all over the fillet and cleaned up the area back there. So here's some screenshots of the analysis that Hawkins talked about. You can actually see the vortex uh, in CFD laying right there in the wing body fillet. And then my uh, other CFD friend did the same thing with uh, certain AOAs and whatnot, different software, all that kind of stuff, but he verified that the uh, uh, the same thing that, that I came up with. So now it's just the proof is in the pudding, right? So we'll see if it actually works. <laughs> okay, so, and then global picture. So the, uh, you want it to shed a vortex that's gonna clean up uh, or reattach that area there at the wing root? Yes. Doing the same work that was previously done with those big VGs we had there exactly. for flight so the, the, seven the, and eight. The big VGs we had before, they were located here. Those VGs are extensively covered in the videos for flight seven and eight. Uh, feel free to go back and check those. Right before the, uh, the uh, yep. things here. Yep. And I also had four of them back here. Those we removed and these are removed. So hopefully it will do the same thing. It's all about keeping this area here attached 
but you know with the vorticity just to keep the boundary layer you know lined up here so so we move the stall outboard so there's the vgs that uh, we we're talking about on flight seven and eight those were actually made out of a piece of l extrusion that uh, uh hawken found at home depot and then hand cut out himself uh, just uh, use double-sided sticky tape to stick them on uh, but again that's all covered in flight seven and eight and you said your friend did some of the cfd what's his name and how well, do you know he, him? He, he his name is Leonard wish i worked together with him at uh piper I've known him for over 20 years and he volunteered to do that too, and uh, so far that looks really good. And uh, so we'll see. Keep fingers crossed. And uh, yeah, because the other good things with that one is that it doesn't create any drag in cruise right. since it's lined up with the uh, um, with the streamlines and all that kind of stuff. And he estimated it was like one or two drag counts of drag, which was like less than one percent of total drag the aircraft which is basically negligible you know so if that works so much better than the VGs because Way they better. will create cruise regardless right or create drag they're, with, they're doing the same thing regardless of angle yeah, attack exactly. okay before we move on from that topic let's just do a quick recap on how the uh, fuselage vortex generator or the stall vane works. So fundamentally, it's very similar to a vortex generator, right? Where the idea is we're just trying to mix the air, right? So the, that boundary layer air, as it goes across the top of the wing and moves further and further back, it uh, starts to lose energy, right? And as it loses, ener loses energy, it gets more and more likely that it'll tumble. When it tumbles, that separation is what begins the process of creating a stall. So a vortex generator is just like a little finger that reaches up and grabs, you know, reaches up through the low energy area right above the, uh, the surface is that low energy boundary layer and up into the high energy area above and grabs it and brings it down and mixes it with the low energy air right on the surface. The problem with the vortex generator is that uh, you know these little blades that are you know we're going this way these little blades that are mounted into the in the free stream is that no matter how fast you're going they're always there creating turbulence they're always there doing that mixing and that mixing takes energy and that energy is drag that slows the airplane down in the cruise phase. The difference with the stall main or the fuselage vortex generator is that while at high angles of attack, it has that, uh, that angle of incidence that creates the vortex and protects the wing downstream. In cruise, it's fared into the free stream, right? Which means the only drag is just the, the surface friction of, uh, of a very small, you know, this big piece of uh, material sitting in the breeze. And that's the advantage.